Thanks, Michael. And uh, I've been to this conference about four or five years, and it's amazing to see how, how much it's grown. So uh, thank you very much to the ARM Committee for inviting us to speak today. Uh, so I'm here to speak on behalf of Hemostemics. Um, this is our sort of our coming out. Um, and uh, I'm hoping I'm pressing the right button here. Uh, we are a public company, so I'll be making some forward-looking statements. Um, we uh, are essentially a, plat uh, a, a clinical stage company based on a platform technology of autologous blood. Um, and we pull off essentially the uh, endothelial progenitors uh, that we use to uh, create new blood vessels uh, in ischemic limbs. So we have uh, quite a bit of anecdotal evidence of around uh, 450 patients to date um, that the cells are uh, uh, blood vessel forming. Um, and we also have an established manufacturing system with a relatively low cost of goods. And so this is an important point because, um, you know, as normally with uh, uh, autologous therapies, they tend to be associated high cost of goods. Um, but we've somewhat, we've, we've managed to hit somewhat of a sweet spot here where we have a relatively low cost of goods with, uh, with an autologous therapy. We have an ongoing international uh, multi-center phase two clinical trial uh, for critical limb ischemia. Uh, it's about 100 patients. We've recruited 20 to date. Um, so we're running it in uh, Canada and South Africa. We, uh, if, you, if anyone follows us, we just received uh, clearance from the FDA to expand the trial to the United States, and we're also looking at expanding it to Taiwan, uh, and also looking at doing a mechanistic study out of Israel and Germany. So it's an ongoing trial, um, and uh, it's, it's been moving along relatively well. And importantly, uh, we have a relatively experienced team, and I, I point this out uh, primarily because, as I said, this is a, a reinvented company under a new management team that's come in over the last 10 months. And normally we put this slide up at the end, but I do want to highlight it up front because uh, this is one of the key sort of strengths um, of this company. Not that my name's on it, but you know the others that are there. Um, so Dr. Elmar Burkhardt, who's standing in the back of the room there, is our uh, president and CEO, is a medical doctor uh, with uh, over 20 years of experience, uh, came from Pfizer, uh, where he was a VP of regenerative medicine for the last five years. Um, also, very importantly, ran the phase two clinical trial uh, for CLI at Astrum. And so, as you can see with, uh, with Dr. Burkhardt's experience, you know, this positions the company very well uh, to run a CLI, uh, CLI trial uh, in, in critical limb ischemia. And then very briefly, uh, uh, Dr. Ina Sorrell runs our manufacturing facility. Our manufacturing facilities are in Israel. Uh, and she, uh, she is uh, one of the legacy member, the only legacy member of this team. Uh, and then uh, Dr. Hardy Nachnek, who's also standing in the back of the room, uh, he's a medical doctor as well, trained at Yale, uh, was on faculty at Duke for the last 10 years, uh, and has done significant research and run clinical trials um, in the endothelial space. And then finally myself, uh, I, I came from CCRM, so uh, you know it's been a real pleasure to be able to watch you know watch the the the, the, organi sorry, the organization grow and the space grow, and and move into what was one of the partner companies of CCRM. So there's a plug for CCRM as well. Um, so I'm not going to belabor this. Uh, you know, you probably heard a fair number of talks about CLI. CLI is a is a relatively attractive space in the sense that it's uh, there's a very very high unmet need. Um, you know, in that there's a very high mortality rates, very, very high amputation rates, uh, and of course, uh, large numbers of patients in, in globally, really. Um, and, you know, but at the same time, the challenges in CLI um, are that, you know, cl running clinical trials in the space and, and meeting endpoints can be quite challenging. And so having the experience to be able to run these, uh, these, cl these clinical trials is very important. So. Uh, our technology, which I'm going to go into in just a moment, uh, really is a platform technology. Um, because it is essentially angiogenic, um, you know, CLI is the tip of the iceberg. And so normally everyone has these beautiful, you know, flowing pipelines. I decided to go with, a, with a, a, an iceberg. I hope you appreciate that. Um, so lots of other ischemic diseases that we're going to be going after um, as, you know, as we expand our program. So what is our lead clinical product? Essentially, uh, it's an autologous uh, blood-derived uh, cell therapy uh, that we, uh, we take, from, uh, take from the patient and then deliver back to them in seven days. This is a very important point because if a patient comes in on a Monday, uh, they give blood, and then uh, seven days later, they come back and, and they get the therapy in a single session. So from a compliance perspective, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's relatively easy. 
Um, so we collect about 250 mils of blood, which is less than a, uh, a traditional blood uh, donation. Uh, we currently ship it to our manufacturing facility, which as I mentioned is based in Israel. Uh, there, we use a proprietary method to isolate uh, a, a fraction of endothelial progenitors uh, that we then incubate with proprietary cocktail factors uh, in our, in our five-day manufacturing process. Uh, at the end of this five-day manufacturing process, um, we then ship the product back to, uh, back to the treatment site. Uh, importantly, this is a live cell product, so all you cryopreservation companies out there, sorry, we're not going to be your customer, but good work. Um, and so, at, at the end of five days, we then uh, in, inject the product as a, uh, um, into, the, into the patient's limb um, for, in a single session. So, how does it actually work? Um, basically, you know, the biology of this, of this is relatively developmentally oriented in that we're pulling off uh, CD34, 31 positive cells uh, that we are priming with angiogenic factors. Um, then using these cells, we're in in injecting them direct directly into uh, the muscle tissue uh, where they are acting essentially as cytokine factories, uh, putting out a lot of trophic factors, which in turn are um, uh, stimulating angiogenesis. So a key part of our go forward program right now um, that um, Drs. Burkhardt and Achnack are, are designing is a open label uh, mechanistic study so that we can demonstrate uh, how these cells are working and that they are essentially um, creating new blood vessels in the patient's limb. Uh, a little bit of anecdotal evidence. So here's a patient who would have lost uh, that toe in, in um, approximately, you know, very, very shortly. Uh, and they, there was significant healing in, uh, in, in, in a, essentially in a month and complete wound closure um, in, in three months. Of course, this is anecdotal evidence and it's very important that we run robust clinical trials. And so our ongoing uh, clinical trial, uh, as I mentioned, is running internationally. So initially it started uh, in Canada uh, and South Africa. Uh, about a month ago, we received uh, clearance from the FDA to expand our trial to the United States. Um, and so we're talking to several sites about that. Uh, we're also um, in discussions with the Taiwan FDA to expand our trial uh, to Asia. So as you probably know, one of the key challenges with clinical trials in, in CLI is patient recruitment uh, and getting sufficient numbers of patients into your trial. Um, so the way that we are trying to address this issue is by running the trial as broadly uh, as possible. And of course, um, it is international multi-center prospect of controlled, randomized, double-blinded. So uh, at the moment, you know, the data, you know, the data we're hoping will be coming out in, a, in approximately uh, six months from now. Um, and so this mechanistic study is an important part of uh, what, our, what we're planning on doing is um, using MRI imaging, uh, uh, imaging patients' legs uh, before and after the treatment. Uh, and we're looking at doing that uh, in Israel and Germany. And this essentially is new technology that's come out over just the, the last few years. Um, and so we want to be able to har harness new technologies to be able to uh, analyze our product. So the target patients, of course, are those with CLI, no real treatment options, control levels, um, and uh, no previous uh, amputations. Uh, the endpoints uh, that we're looking at are, of course, mortality and amputation, but also uh, we are looking at uh, doubling of wound size uh, and de novo gangrene. And so uh, this essentially is a very sort of pharma pharmaceutically uh, oriented trial where we're de-risking the technology uh, so that we then set ourselves up well uh, for a pivotal trial um, at the end. So in terms of timeline, where are we going uh, from here? Um, we expect to be having our interim data in about six to eight months from now uh, in Q2 of, uh, of 2016. Uh, completion of the trial uh, in Q1 of 2017, um, and that is, you know, relatively conservative. Uh, with if we do meet all of our recruitment criteria, uh, sorry, recruitment timelines, uh, we should hopefully meet that, or maybe even beat it. Um, the FDA IND clearance was a very important um, milestone for us. Uh, it really demonstrated that this new management team that has come in over the last sort of eight months uh, has been able to execute on key um, key value adding milestones, and so getting expanding to the U.S. has been very has been uh, uh, important for us. Uh, we're going to be running a, this mechanistic study 
um, that I mentioned, and so that will be uh, probably from Q, uh, Q4 through about uh, Q3 of 2016. Um, right now, as I mentioned, we have our manufacturing in Israel. As we expand our trial to the United States, uh, we're looking at setting up manufacturing uh, in, in North America as well. And that, of course, provides uh, redundancy and uh, is, is, is a key part of our strategic planning. Um, and as I mentioned, we have a relatively low cost of goods. Um, and while our process is relatively manual right now, because it's a very, very simple process, uh, we're going to be working with actually a lot of groups you know, at this conference to automate our process and further reduce our cost of goods. Because as you know, this is one of the key challenges in our industry is to make a uh, commercially viable product that has a reasonable cost of goods that you can still sell at a price point that is acceptable to the market. And then finally, of course, as I mentioned, uh, with our very strong clinical core between uh, Drs. Hardin and Achnek, uh, sorry, between Drs. Burkhardt and, and Achnek, uh, we are planning on expanding the, uh, expanding the program into additional, additional indications. So that's really it, and I'm surprised I have three minutes left, so um, either I can take any questions or um, give you three minutes to get your breath. All right, thank you very much.